Hey homesteaders! So today I am cutting up and canning potatoes. I wanted to show you really quickly what I'm doing. This is a rebel canning technique that I'm using. So this is not the whole FDA approved, all the letter companies, whatever, alphabets. It's, it's good to follow what they say, but you don't always have to follow what they say because there are a lot of canning techniques that have been used for thousands of years by people to preserve food that have worked just fine for them. Um, so just choose your foods carefully. I, I don't like to rebel can a whole lot with meat, but with veggies and stuff, because you can see in the can if something has gone bad with those, um, your botulism is not going to be a problem like it's going to be for meats and things. I'm going to show you what I did. And um, I'm doing several different cans of potatoes. First is the russets. Um, we, my husband, my wonderful husband, peeled all 10 pounds of russets and all 25 pounds of sweets <laughs> so that I could go ahead and start work on the canning process. So we peeled the potatoes and some of them I went ahead and cut up into French fries. So in this jar, I have the French fries um, that I have cut. So in order to do the French fry shape, um, I went ahead and cut my potato in half. And then from there, I just cut it again until I ran out of space. I have a scrap potato jar. So like the ends of the potatoes, the pieces that would not quite French fry, the big pieces that did not quite do what I wanted them to for hash browns, they're going in my scrap potato jar. And this is just going to be something that I use for soup or roast or whatever else because it's just potato pieces that didn't quite break down like I wanted them to. But I'm not going to throw them away. I'm going to can them. So for my French fries, I am cutting them into, I like string fries. So I'm cutting them into more of the string fry style. Let me cut these. So I'm just cutting them again, like I showed you with the half of the potato and then I'm cutting back down vertically toward me. So I cut horizontally first. All right, so I'm taking, I cut my potato in half. I'm cutting this way across the middle, horizontally through the potato. And then and after I do that, I'm going to cut vertically into the potato to cut the fries out. So if you've never cut French fries before at home, this is how you do it. Really take potatoes that have been pre-frozen, like all of your French fried potatoes are going to be. You can't can those once they're pre-frozen. So this is the only way that I can actually can and have shelf stable French fries and hash browns because I also made hash browns. Now I'm going to cram this thing as full as I can and then I'm going to rinse it thoroughly. So I don't know if you've ever handled potatoes before, but if you have, you will notice that it leaves a film on your hands. This is potato starch. You do not want potato starch in your jars because starches can actually cause uh, your, you to have more bacteria in your jars. So now that I've got this stuffed, I'm gonna just rinse. I'm gonna rinse three times. So I'm gonna rinse and kind of press on it. My water is going to get cloudy and I'm going to dump that out. I'm going to do it again. Just rinse. Water is a little less cloudy. Now I went ahead and pre-rinsed the fries that are already in here. So my water is not as cloudy as it would have been had I not done that. So basically the only potatoes that needed rinsing were the ones I just cut on video. Okay. I dumped all the water out. And I am going to wipe this down. This has vinegar already on it. I'm going to wipe down the edges. I don't want bacteria building on these edges. Now for my pressure canner, I am using the Denali lids. Uh, I trust them to seal better and I trust them to hold better. So I actually removed all the ball lids off of these and I'm using only Denali lids for this canning project. Now I am also doing hash browns. So in order to do hash browns, I just took the whole potatoes and I put them in my food processor. So I had the lid on. I'm just demonstrating. It's obviously not on the, not on the processor. I'm making French fries out of these, but I just pretty much, I cut them down if they were too big to fit, if they were a good size to fit. I put them in there. I put my blade on 
Um, there's a slicer side for like cheese slice type slices. And then there is a grating side. Um, this is also what I use for coleslaw. So I put it grating side up in there and it sits right at the top of this inside on top of the little piece in the machine. And then I put the lid on and I just let it run on low while I put the potatoes in. So this is the way that I made my hash browns. And as you can see, it has made some nice shredded potatoes there. So I have some beautifully shredded potatoes. They are starting to turn a little pink because they're being exposed to the oxygen and also because I have not rinsed them yet. So once I rinse them, they won't be quite as pink. Now these, because they are shredded potatoes and shredded potatoes make a mess, I have those in a strainer. So I'm actually using a strainer and a funnel to get those loaded and ready for the jars. So as I did with the jars, I'm going to thoroughly rinse until I can look below um, into my sink and see that the water is not really cloudy anymore. Oh, and there's a piece that didn't really. So some of the edges of the potatoes sometimes don't shred. And this is why I don't waste. So the edges that didn't shred, so I'm just sticking those in my extras jar for something else another time. So I am rinsing my hash browns. The water is running clear out from underneath. I've got my jar over here ready to go. I'm going to take it and I'm going to kind of give it a little bit of a squeeze, just a little bit. I'm going to squeeze it. I don't want all that water in there as little as possible. And now I'm going to take my funnel and I'm going to move a little bit closer. You can't move too close because I've got a dripping strainer here. But I'm going to take my hash browns and I am going to put them in the jar. I'm going to pack these as much as I can into this jar. Ooh. It's a lot of water still coming off of that. We kind of got the leftovers there at the bottom. There's another kind of chunk of potato that I'm not going to put in my hash browns. I'm going to move it to my extras jar. Let me rinse my hands off over the strainer. I don't like to waste any of the potato if I can help it. Okay, so let me put this potato piece over here in my extra things jar. Um, and then I am going to take this, dump it in the strainer, give it a good rinse. Now I actually want to preserve some of my potato water because potato water is excellent for bread making. You can put it in the refrigerator. Even those little pieces of the potatoes that got stuck in there um, will be amazing in bread. So I am going to take this and when my recipe calls for water in bread, I am going to use my potato water. So let me rinse out my bowl here that I had my peeled potatoes in, and I'm going to prepare it to get the potato water and catch it. Now for this, because I'm going to use it for cooking, I already have some filtered water. Woo! Do not panic when your potatoes turn a little bit pinkish because they're exposed to the air. That is oxidation, and it is totally normal for potatoes to turn a little pinkish. So I know most of us don't really peel and mess with potatoes. We just wrap them and bake them, or we go ahead and peel them and maybe mash them or whatever. So having, having potatoes that are just kind of shredded and sitting is, might be a little bit different to you, but that is just oxidation. It's not going to hurt a thing. Let me get my potato pieces that didn't quite break down. I'm going to push those in here. I have not really done a whole lot with this jar. I haven't rinsed it or anything like that yet. So that is coming. Now I'm going to take my filtered water and I am just going to run that over these potatoes. So there, I just interrupted myself with a picture and you could see what the potato water looked like. Um, that is delicious for making stuff with. So it is perfectly good water. And I'm going to go ahead and lift my strainer out of there, squeeze what I can out. And then I'm going to keep rinsing because these need several rinses, but I just needed enough potato water for baking. 
You can do that with all your potato water if you want to. You don't have to dump out any of it. I only need two cups. And I am going to pack hash browns in my jar as tight as I can get it, almost all the way up to the rim. I'm going to leave about one fourth inch headspace for these because there is no liquid. That's looking good. Water's running clear. Let me move around the stuff on top and make sure the stuff at the bottom has gotten good and rinsed. It pays off because you have shelf stable, freshly done potatoes and a lot of it. So my 10 pound bag is making a lot. I'm actually gonna have to run my pressure canner twice um, in order to get all of my russets and then my sweets going. I might have to run it three times depending on how many quart sized jars I have left. It. Um, wide, wide mouth would be a whole lot easier than the regular mouth, but I had only regular mouth. So that's what I'm using. <laughs> you know, you use what you've got. So let me wipe this down with my vinegar. Make sure it's good and clean. Again, I'm almost filling it all the way to the top. So there's my rim and there's where the potatoes sit. So it's only about a fourth headspace that I'm leaving on that. And since I just touched it, I'm going to wipe it down again. And let's push those potatoes in. Get my lid lined up with the ball logo. Kind of weird about that. And then put that in and I have room. I have one wide mouth, just one. So I have, <laughs> This is a beautiful potato start right there. You can already see the little fingers reaching up. Um, I'm very happy with that. And so I've already got that in water over here and I'm starting to get that ready because I want to have some potatoes to put in the ground this year. They did so well last year that I wanted to have some extras this year. Let's see, where are my lids? I thought I had a wide mouth lid. There it is. Okay. There's another jar of hash browns. I have room. Where did my other jar go? Oh, it's this one. Silly. I have room for this one. And then I don't have any more room for anything else. So I will not be adding the rest of those potatoes to this batch. I will be doing probably two rounds of sweet potatoes. Um, and I'm going to have to do them in quarts because I do believe this is the end of my pints. I have started, like this jar here is a salsa jar that has been washed and the glue picked off where the label was. And I have started saving. I have done that since last summer. I've started saving glass, um, pasta jars, salsa jars, whatever I can. Um, if you received canned goods from me for Christmas, you probably got a lid with a little note that said, if you're not going to use this, reuse, give back, <laughs> give it back, but please don't throw it away because the jars are so expensive and they're also getting increasingly hard to find. Third party sellers have them. I've been shocked at the prices on marketplace for nasty old used jars and you get 12 jars and they're they're wanting $25 for 12 jars of old used <laughs> jars like I don't care if they're quartz I'm not paying that that doesn't save me money I'm I can to save money not to spend a bunch of money on your nasty jars so we'll see how this Denali lid does on a non-ball jar all right they are done. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pints Woo, of potatoes. I still have some left. I'm going to French fry along with the sweet potatoes. Get those ready while these cook. Uh, last night, because my pressure canner has been up for a while um, and hasn't been used in several months, uh, I actually got some, whoa, there it is. I got some Vaseline out and I made sure I put Vaseline on the lid, um, on the inner rim. And these are also re-greased so that they are ready for use. In order to keep up your pressure canner, it's good to do that regularly. 
Hang on, let me get the gauge off. I need it to release steam for 10 minutes before I put the gauge on. Mine, because of my elevation, will be a 10 pound gauge. These will go in the pressure canner for 65 minutes, okay? On the 10 pound gauge. It's gotta let steam out for 10 minutes first, then I'll put the gauge on. I'll set the timer for 65 minutes, and at the end of 65 minutes, I will pull them out, put them on a cloth. Um, I accidentally don't do this. I accidentally took a jar out in the fall. I believe it's cowboy candy. I took a jar out of the canner. It's just water bath can. So the jar wasn't really even that hot. It had been water bath for 10 minutes. And I was trying to get it on my towel and I accidentally touched it to the cold granite countertop when I was trying to maneuver it onto the towel and the jar exploded. <laughs> so, I mean, it didn't like glass go everywhere. I mean, the bottom just like popped right. It was a clean, the bottom just clean popped off and like all the contents spilled out because the cold jar or the cold counter had touched the hot jar. So this is why we put towels down. I'm gonna go ahead and have enough towels down to where I'm not gonna have to do any jar maneuvering um, to get it up here because I do not want to lose a jar of my potatoes. <laughs> I just had to throw all the contents away because I was worried there might be like a shard of glass, even though it was a clean break. I didn't want there to be even a shard of glass if I tried to salvage the food. So I had to throw away. Luckily, it was just a half pint. It wasn't a huge loss, but it was still like, this is why we put down cloths for your jars to go on. So I hope this has been a wonderful learning experience for you. I know this is a longer video, but we have gone through the steps of doing potatoes and it is quite the process if you want to do several different kinds. And I sincerely hope that you give this a try to find potatoes on sale. If you manage to get a hold of any of them, please, please, please consider picking up canning sooner rather than later. It's becoming more of a necessity. I can't stress that enough you have still time to learn. There are still cans on the shelves of food that you can buy if you have a failed experiment, but you need to go ahead and start learning. It's very important. And everybody in here, I mean, I know almost all of you personally, and I do care whether or not you starve. I don't want you to starve. And I would send you food if I could, if you're close by. I would provide some things for you to give you another couple of days to live, but that's more, more days that my family doesn't have food. And so please keep in mind that if you get in a pickle and you need food, you're taking a day of food from somebody else that has prepared. It'll be just a good idea. If you can't get three months supply of food put aside, have a month's supply of food put aside, just be ready, just in case. I know that a lot of people have been saying, and all the farmers I've been listening to, people have been saying for a long time, oh, prepare, prepare. Fall of 2022 is when food shortages are going to be. We haven't really seen them here. Thank the good Lord. We have not seen them here, but everybody's still saying they're coming. I am still listening to them. I, you know, I'm, I'd rather be on the safe side and have food for my family. And I'm hearing these things and I'm at the point now where I have enough food and I'm going, I'm good. If something happens, I'm good. I have food that I can feed my family. I have some food I can share. I have things for blessing boxes if need be. I have things for families at our church if need be. I can put together a bag worth of food that will feed them for a week. So I feel good about that. I feel good about where I am. Um, I really hope you can say the same about feeling good where you are. I will do a separate video on the sweet potatoes um, because they are going to be cubed and it's going to be slightly different. So thank you for watching, for hanging in there with me. I wish you luck in your canning. And I hope you pick it up and can some things that your family likes. Till another time. Bye, homesteaders. Hey, everybody. So I'm just holding my phone for this part because it's easier. Um, canning sweet potatoes is pretty much the can and the same as canning regular potatoes. Um, I have diced up. So there's my bowl. I've been dicing up sweet potatoes. And I've also been French frying them. I'll show you a picture of what they both look like. And I am doing these, so I'm both rebel canning and following the guidelines, the safety guidelines. So my French fries are a rebel canning method. And these don't have any liquid in them. So I've just French fried my potatoes, my sweet potatoes, and put them in there. Because I want 
crispy, chewy fries. When you add water to potatoes, it basically creates like a mashed potato. So when you pour them out and drain the water, you're going to end up getting basically sweet potato pie filling type consistency, sweet potato, mashed potatoes. Um, so these are not going to be really good for keeping whole when you add water. However, that is what the guidelines call for. So all I'm doing is putting the sweet potatoes in there up to one inch head space and I am filling it up to one inch head space with water, hot water. This is hot water. And right about there. And then I'm just going to wipe it down with the vinegar. Okay, Oof, I pushed it out of sight, sorry. So I'm just wiping it down with the vinegar and then I am going to lid it and put it in the canner. Now these are quarts instead of pints because I used literally every pint that I had for the russets. I actually ended up emptying some of my dehydrated food out of one of my other pints so I could have an extra one. Um, but all I'm gonna do is lid that Make sure it's on there real good and put it in the pressure canner. Now I have enough room for one more quart to go in here and then I'm going to turn this on for 90 minutes. Um, it takes a little bit longer for potatoes because they are starchy. Sweet potatoes, you don't have to rinse like you do the starchy russet potatoes. I did give them a little bit of a rinse, but they're more um, carrot-like. I guess you could say like when you handle them, you don't feel the starch on your hands and everything. So they're going to be a little bit different. So the rinses are, you don't have to rinse them, squeeze them, all the stuff that you do with the russet potatoes. So I did end up dicing russets. So if you are going to do potatoes and you want to do like the safe canning and not be a rebel canner with russet potatoes, you dice them up. Um, this could actually use probably one more potato in there, one more small potato. And then I would just fill that up to one inch headspace with the hot water and put that in. So when you pour these out, these will make more of like a potato soup where it breaks down or a mashed potato. Um, anything that you don't have water in will not make good mashed potatoes. They get a little bit of a chewier consistency. So they're much better fried with oil than they are trying to get them mashed. So that's just... For your knowledge, I have 10 pints of my potatoes cooling. I have how many quarts? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven quarts of sweet potatoes about to go in. I'm probably going to have another round of seven quarts. So it has been a busy canning day, but um, I hope that helps you if you decide to can potatoes. And I hope you all have a blessed day. All my kids are home now too. <laughs> Bye.